Another Sunday, another Enemy of the States Dank Podstash. Before we jump in, big shout out and thank you to Dank Podstash super supporters, Maxwell, Dave, and Dennis. You support the show on Patreon and help me make it what it is, and I really appreciate it. Uh, the Dank Podstash is officially sponsored by Project Sparta. It's time to get hashtag Boogaloo ready and in fighting shape. Greg Papanicholas is going to get you there with personalized meal plans, training, group support, and tons and tons of amazing fitness and motivational resources and knowledge, including the Project Sparta Facebook group. You can go to projectspartacoaching.com and learn more about Greg's work and get started on your path to health. Don't be that person that only sits and talks about change, whether it's your health or even the boogaloo. Get up and start learning, drilling, and training. One of the most important parts of prepping, no matter what for, is your physical health. Get to Project Spire Coaching now and get after it. We have a special offer for our listeners from friend of the show, author, and content creator Shane Radliff of Liberty Under Attack Publications. Take 10% off your order at libertyunderattack.com using coupon code DANK10. They got all kinds of books, including Hashtag Agora, Second Round Book on Strategy, and Shane's very own Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, and plenty more. They offer assistance to new authors throughout the publishing process, everything you could want to do, edit, proofread, formatting, Kindle and paperback, and full-service audiobook production. That's Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story, find your freedom. Special shout out to Voluntary Apothecary. Voluntary Apothecary was kind enough to send me a sample care package and some awesome new summer scents of their beard oil. And in the care package, beard oil, mustache, wax, combs, and more. And you can check out their amazing products at Tashtamer.com and VoluntaryApothecary.com. Check the episode description for those links. They will be in there. The Dank Podstash is also teaming up with Road to Anarchy for a monthly newsletter and more. Road to Anarchy is an online magazine connecting groups of voluntary individuals who are looking to increase their freedom from the state. Becoming more self-reliant and developing a better focus on becoming a productive individual is the only mission. The only division is against the state. No matter your flavor of anarchy, finding your road to anarchy is the first step to progress. The time is now to put our individual differences aside, join up, and create change. You can go to RoadToAnarchy.com to sign up for the monthly zine or to Patreon.com slash the Dank Podstash and get signed up for that zine with any tier of support. Check out the Road to Anarchy Facebook page and groups to connect with other individuals on the Road to Anarchy. Where is your road taking you? One more shout out. And this shout out is for today's guest, DJ Phoenix, Anarcho DJ Phoenix of Anarchy Radio. You can join him for Friday Night Super Jams. All music, all night, starting at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Saturday morning interviews starting at 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And news and opinions starting Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can find Anarchy Radio live on the Float app, exclusively on the Float app. And he also has everything archived there as we talk about in today's show. You can also catch my appearance on the Saturday morning Anarchy Radio radio interview on the Dank Podstash Patreon page. All right, let's jump in with Anarcho DJ Phoenix for another hell of an episode. Enemy of the state. An enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. Dank Podstash. You're listening to Enemy of the State's Dank Podstash. Check out thedankpodstash.com to find every episode of the Dank Podstash Links to support the show via our Bitbacker and Patreon, Dank Podstash merchandise, and much more. If you'd like to advertise on the Dank Podstash, email us at dankpodstash at gmail.com. Back for another episode of Enemy of the States Dank Podstash with Phoenix Aurora of Anarchy Radio, Road to Anarchy, many projects, mostly Anarchy Radio, though. What is up, man? Oh, not too much, man. Just getting getting audio issues sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun before a show. Gotta love it. Um, yeah. How's uh, how's the Anarchy Radio been going? I'm, I have a lot of questions about that too, about uh, why you chose to go on um, exclusively float. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty going pretty well. Um, 
I don't have the viewership that I'd like to have, but you know, it's it's a very very niche market. It's mainly designed for anarchists, which is a very small percentage of the population. And then you know, hurting getting anarchists to do anything is like hurting fucking cats. So I mean, I do it mainly just for myself. Um, I a, a few years back I was driving a cab. This must have been like 07, 08, and I, I couldn't fucking stand the music that was on, on the radio. And I fucking, I just, I just couldn't do it. Um, it, it reminded me too much of 1984 when, um, uh, when the dude's standing out, sitting up in the attic and he's listening to the little, to the old lady um, humming some song as she hangs clothes on the, on the clothesline. And he's like, yeah, I totally f made that song. Like it's all just fake shit. And, um, and I, I just couldn't stand uh, mainstream music anymore. So, you know, I, I stopped listening to music for fuck almost a decade. Um, I, I hated it all. Yeah, and, and what kind of a life is 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 a life with no music? It's terrible. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking a. Yeah, ten years so, without guess, music. Jesus Christ, I couldn't do that. And it's so like this project kind of evolved over uh, over a number of years. Um, you know, I I try a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, you can't stream music to any of the main platforms because mm -hmm. then they'll just cut you off. Right. Because, um, you know, oh, my God, we've got our intellectual property. Suck a dick. <laughs> um, and so, like, I decided I'd focus mainly on just liberty-oriented you know, anarchist bands and groups and uh, and just stream that exclu exclusively to Flow to that they do not censor you in w whatsoever, uh, at least not that I've seen. I mean, I'm sure if somebody's on there with a video and they're hacking up babies or something they're probably sure. they might pull that maybe if they can right. i don't even know if they can oh they like, might not have access ernie to hancock says you know oh. the perfect platform exactly hmm. you know ernie hancock says the perfect platform is the platform that he can have his catapult channel on you know where you got little baby kittens little white kittens getting catapulted into soros uh, cactuses jesus you know, and you can't take it down like that's the type of that's the type of censorship resistant uh, platform that people need these days. Otherwise, because if they can force you to take it down, they will force you to take it down. Right. And if if you don't have access to taking it down, then they them those they can't force you to take it down. So I mean that's why that's why I chose Float specifically. Right. That could open up some and problems. Exclusive. You know that could open up uh, some victimization for Absolutely. sure. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting experiment they have going. Did you start anywhere besides Float, or did you start it on Float? Oh, um, about three, four years ago, I, we, me and a buddy of mine, my roommate at the time, we were doing it on Facebook. Mm. And, uh, of course, you talk about anything on Facebook, even four years ago, you know, your stream would get shut down constantly. Mm -hmm. um, so during, you know, a, a one, two hour show, we'd be shut down four or five times. Right. And, you know, only the most dedicated people that want to listen to that music or listen to you rambling about whatever the hell it is you want to talk about are going to just continuously click on that button because, you know, humans have the attention span of a gnat these days. Mm -hmm. Gnat, goldfish, teaspoon, what have you, fucking name. Well, I think we've talked about <laughs> it maybe on, um, maybe a little bit on when I came on your show, but for listeners of the Dank Podstash, how did you become an anarchist? What was your road to anarchy? Um, well, my road to anarchy took quite a while. Uh, my dad was a Marine in Vietnam, so I grew up on, you know, red, white, and blue, and fucking, I remember listening to Brit Smallin Festival, um, you know, his, his anti-war protest songs, you know, The, the Wall, and, um, and, like, you know, fucking, uh, Still in Saigon, um, like from as long as from like as, as far back as I can remember, five six years old, I was listening to you know this pro USA you know right. fucking but but still anti war type message um, from all these Vietnam vets, and uh, you know when I was eighteen I tried to join the Marine Corps, uh, but having known that my dad was in there for twenty six years, I didn't want to lie, mm -hmm. so it got up to the moment of truth, which is like this actual thing where they they, they sit you down and they're like this is your moment of truth. Tell us the truth about everything, um, you know, and that way we can make sure that you're you know, a decent, honorable individual. And having had my dad be in that position, I didn't want to disgrace him. I didn't want to disgrace my own integrity, my own honor uh, by lying. So I told him the truth. Mm -hmm. And um, 
about, you know, my drug use, my criminal background. And they're like, yeah, no, 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 never mind, never mind. You're classified F4. You're unfit for military service. You're you're done. Um, and my recruiter actually got investigated for fraudulent enlistment. Wow. Um, it was a whole fucking, a whole to do, yeah. Um, so fast forward about eight years, and I'm 26 years old. I've got a six-month-old and a two-year-old, and I had just lost a, a job. And I'm like, fuck! I need, I need something. I need, I need, I need to work. And I was like, you know, my dad, he 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 had a pension from the Marine Corps. You know, I'm sure I could do the same stuff. Um, let me give it a shot. Uh, so I called up ten different recruiting stations. Um, none of them answered. The, on the tenth one, I got a Sergeant Wood, and I told him my story about how I tried joining in. Sergeant Wood. And I told him my story about how I tried joining the Marine Corps back when I was 18 in 2001 and how I was uh, I was kicked off. And he's like, hold on, let me give me one second. And he, he put on the uh, uh, the RSNCO, the, the Recruiting Station uh, Commission Officer in Charge. And I told him my situation. And he's like, Ottinger, do you know who the fuck you're talking to? I'm like, no, Gunner Sergeant. He's like, this is Gunny Reyes, you son of a bitch. I was your recruiter back then, you, <laughs> you motherfucker. You got me fucking uh, investigated for fraudulent enlistment, you son of a bitch. Like, he's just going off on me, you know, like fucking eight years of pent up rage and aggression for this fucking little dipshit that fucking almost ruined his military career. And uh, he's like, you know, if we do this, you don't quit on me again. You know, I will make sure you get in, but but you don't quit. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, of course not. Um, you know, I, I had a, I had two kids I had to fucking provide for. Mm -hmm. So I, I went, I went into, you know, I did the whole pooly thing. I was 26 fucking years old. I was, I was way older than anyone else in my unit. Sure. Uh, I think I was like the second oldest in my entire unit in boot camp. Um, and so like the brainwashing didn't exactly take, um, <sighs> Like, yeah. like the, uh, the, the mental conditioning yeah. that they try to impose on you of, you know, the, just this esprit de corps and uh and you know just uh, this 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 group think didn't take as much because i was looking around at all these little kids just getting their asses chewed out and i'm like why don't you just jump through the fucking hoop you'll be fine <laughs> and like you know the butt from her you know, i'm not training today and i'm not doing this and i'm not doing that and i'm just like wow I, part of me wanted to be like oh good for you and the other part of me is like you're a fucking dumbass dude you're stuck on this fucking in this in this place for three months at the very least the fastest way to get out is to finish it mm -hmm. um why don't you just fucking jump through their stupid hoops and i remember uh like fucking up my ankle i, I was a skateboarder before i joined the marine corps mm -hmm. and I, I dislocated broke my ankle and i always had bad issues with my ankle and like it kept getting fucked up it kept getting fucked up uh, we were marching one time, and a kid behind me stepped on my ankle, and then we were doing the the, uh, the obstacle courses, and fucking, I thought my drill instructor said, drop, so I'm 25, 30 feet in the air, and I fucking hang over oh, and fucking let go, and yes, Fuck. fucking toothpicked right into, like, five feet of water, landed on my bad ankle, was freaked out because I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm, I'm going to get sent to a medical medical separation unit now, and it's going to be even longer before I get to see my kids again. Mm -hmm. Um which luckily it never happened. I was able to complete boot camp, and I went on to uh, my MOS training in 29 Palms, California, for uh, communications. And then I finally, or, um, my, my MCT up in uh, Camp Pendleton. And then from there, I went on to 29 Palms. And I finished it all. And I remember throughout all of it, you know, the only thing I could I, that kept me going was the idea that the faster I get through this, the faster I get to see my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I was, I was going into the reserves cause I knew that wherever I, wherever I got stationed, their mom was not going to follow me. Right. Um, it just wasn't going to happen. So I went into the reserves, completed it all, came back to Illinois. Um, my reserve unit was in Chicago, 224 and about a month or two in, um, my sister brought home, uh, these, these DVDs. It was uh, the Zeitgeist films, one and two, and then like two Alex Jones films. <laughs> and nice. I've always been the type to, yeah, I've always been the type to like, you know, I, I love knowledge. I've always been interested in learning more and, 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 you know, challenging my own positions on things. So uh, I started watching these Zeitgeist films, and the first part, Modern Money Mechanics, um, they explained what the fucking Federal Reserve was, and I was like, holy 
fucking <laughs> shit. What the fuck is going on here? And you know, I started delving into the everything about um, the Federal Reserve, and I fucking chewed through Creature of Jekyll Island. Um, and fast forward like two years, and like I'm showing, I'm, I'm bringing my laptop to to drill, and I'm fucking <laughs> arguing with my sergeants and my corporals and my staff, the staff NCOs. I'm like, look, just watch this shit, dude. We're we're doing the wrong fucking shit. What the hell's going on? <laughs> And, you know, they, they, they were still wrapped up in, you know, I love the Marine Corps and, and, you know, this is the greatest place in the world. We're going to go murder fucking brown people in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. And I said it started to, to click like, yeah, everything that I'm fighting for is wrong. So I started doing everything I could to get fucking kicked out of the Marine Corps. I gained a shit ton of weight. Uh, I failed drug tests. I failed my, my physical fitness tests, my combat fitness tests. Um, I just became like the biggest fucking shit bag in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and like throughout my time there, the, there was these concepts of honor, courage, and commitment, which was part of the, the thing that made me like, I really, really internalized that, that concept. Um, you know, having honor, having moral integrity, moral courage, correcting the people above you. Um, you know, in, in boot camp, they tell you, you know, if you see a fucking a colonel or a, a, a fucking staff sergeant or gunnery sergeant, they're fucked up. You correct them. Right. Doesn't matter what happens. You correct them anyways, because that's what you're supposed to do. And and I, that became such an integral part of who I was, because like I was 26, I wasn't I wasn't afraid of correcting these fucking officers and and and, and non commissioned officers that were younger than me that might have had higher rank. But fuck it, dude, you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. So I, I had no problem correcting them. Yeah, but that's not and, what they wanted uh, uh, wanted you to correct them on was that the whole operation was, you know, against uh, good morals and good sense. They want you to correct them according to their hierarchy of, you know, rules and whatnot. So <laughs> interesting. Right. They wanted to make sure make sure that everybody's fucking sleeves were, were, were fucking rolled yeah. properly and you got your fucking <laughs> your, your your boots bloused properly and shit like that. And here you and, come uh, with the Alex yeah, Jones. Like so They're funny. turning the friggin' frogs gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that was exactly the time where I where I was watching. Um, <clears throat> so, like you know, I I, I I I very deeply internalized the honor, courage, commitment, the the sixteen leadership traits of judgment, justice, uh, uh, decisiveness, integrity, dependability, bearing, and selfishness, courage, knowledge, loyalty. It all became really deeply about who a part of who I was, and I just was looking around and and I was like, "What the fuck's going on?" So like I, for about two years, I just delved into all the Alex Jones fear porn I could get, I could get my hands on. I watched every single one of his movies over and over again. Like I I was I was working at a company that built um, charge controllers for John Deere tractors, mm. and so like everybody else there was Mexican. I was the only me and me and a buddy of mine that I that. We started working there together. We're the only white dude, so I was able to just, you know, put Alex Jones on for eight hours a day, and just watching his his movies, you know, not having to worry about headphones or any of that stuff. Sure. Uh, and I just do my work, and uh, I started listening to his podcast, and I found his podcast on an AM radio station in my in in, mm. in Illinois, and so like I started listening to that, and I, I left that position, and I started driving a, a med van hmm. so that gave me a plenty of time to listen to the radio well this one day after alex jones um free talk live came on and this was like my first actual interaction with libertarianism sure and i remember they were having a discussion about these two girls who uh one of them was was 17 the other one was like 19 the, the one the one sent uh, the other a uh, nudie picture of, her, of herself, and they were discussing whether or not this was like a crime or anything like that. And uh, I, I remember calling in because I was calling into all these like, you know, left wing um, Democrat radio shows like fucking Tom Tom Hartman and mm-hmm. shit like that. And so like I was I was addicted to fucking calling up and arguing with these people. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> so I called into Free Talk Live. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, this is a states' rights issue. Like, the, the federal government should have absolutely nothing to do with it. They don't have, they don't have the authority. They don't have the jurisdiction to regulate uh, the interactions of people. I mean, that that should that's supposed to be left to the states. And I look back at that now, and I'm like, fuck, do you mean the states' <laughs> rights issue? States don't have rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, 
Ian and Mark started, you know, they, they, they kind of walked me through that and, and being the consistent individual that I always strove to be, I was like, well, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. And so for the next year, year and a half, I called into Free Talk Live every single fucking night to argue and debate about stuff. And I was like, the, the non-aggression principle, what the fuck is this? You know, I mean, shouldn't it, shouldn't it be about like the non-trauma principle? Like, it shouldn't, the, shouldn't the point be not creating trauma in people? Um, so like, I debated that for about two, three months. Like, um, like, like, just because you say something to someone, you could still create trauma in them. Sure. Like not just, you know, like physical mm -hmm. violence. Sure. You want to stop the trauma of that's why it's not okay to assault people. It's because you create trauma in them. So I had it in my head, like, you know, words can create trauma too. But then uh, somebody pointed out the fact that words creating trauma in you is a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, being offended is a choice. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And I started, you know, studying. I really got into the economic side of it. Um, I found Learn Liberty, um, learnliberty.org or .com. I can't remember which. But And back then, uh, for every video you watched, you, you accrued a certain amount of points. And you could buy merchandise in their, in their store for, for, for watching videos. So I got like three different T-shirts. I got a couple of posters because I would just watch everything they had on every single topic and subject. And then I'd make a new account and then watch it all over again in order to get more fucking cool swag. <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> so like and, and they really really push um the the economic side of it i think it was uh uh the center for i can't remember exactly what it was but but uh, learn liberty was ran by the center for non-aggression or something like that um it, i think it was like a mises institute sure. um offshoot um so like i really got into the economic side of it and just was lost in you know the Rothbardian, Miesian, fucking Hayek uh, aspect of anarchism. And uh, slowly but surely started kind of realizing that, yeah, anarcho-capitalism is nice. It's what I most closely uh, associate with. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mutual mutual, uh, mutual aid societies and and being able to... Uh, to 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 commingle with people that don't necessarily agree with you economically um, is a really important thing when it comes to community building. Yes, because you know we could all have our, we could all be you know intellectual anarchists, but if you don't fucking build a community, it doesn't make it doesn't mean a goddamn thing. You're still under the thumb of the state. You're still you're still a slave to the system. So like understanding how to interact with people um, peacefully became like a really big uh a really big focus for me and that's only been like the last two or three years mm -hmm. um because you know i went through that pissed off anarchist phase where i'm screaming at everybody you know no you're a fucking status this is wrong you're you're immoral and you should feel bad for for fucking voting <laughs> uh, which you really should yeah um but telling them that doesn't make a but, very you know, good impression it, it, <laughs> right right you, you don't change you don't change people's minds by telling them how evil they are yeah um no so I... <laughs> like you know it was that slow progression about how far you go yeah i uh that's that's a very thorough explanation of that story i fucking love it that's a long road it's interesting too through radio <laughs> shows man through fucking radio shows that you heard on an actual radio i don't think i've ever met an anarchist who had that path you know it's usually uh online or something and it's not like this is back in the fucking 90s or something when there were no podcasts or anything like that. So that's, no, that's this very is, interesting. This is 2010. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. It was like 2010, 2011. Crazy. Yeah. And you know, as back to, you know, not telling status that you, <laughs> you're bad and you should feel bad for voting. I still enjoy uh, arguing that with libertarians all the time. <laughs> I think it's a little more fun to poke at the people you're closer to. <laughs> That's all. I always like messing with the libertarians because yeah. they get so angry. <laughs> I, you know, the libertarian party just is, makes no fucking sense to me. It's it's such a fucking contradiction in terms. We want to be libertarian, but we want to have a political party to tell people how to live their lives. What the fuck's wrong with you? Who the fuck is Joe Jorgensen? Okay, I don't even yes. know this woman. I've never heard of her in my life. That's what I, I saw that today. I woke up and I'm like... What the fuck is this? Who? How did Joe? George, who is this person that got the Libertarian nomination after Vermin Supreme has been killing it and Mises or Mises Caucus been uh, screeching about Hornberger and all this stuff? It's like where did this fucking person come from? I don't even know how yeah. they decided that. 
But holy shit, did they toss more gas on the dumpster fire, and I'm still loving it. I'm loving it even more. It's fucking great. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even pay attention to them anymore. Like, if you think that, like, I, I, I appreciate the, um, the, 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 the cultural impact that a libertarian party will have in, in spreading out these ideas over the short term, which is really the only way that I can see uh, humanity ever coming to to like a global liberty oriented anarchist society is mm-hmm. is through the the long the, the short the long term but in the short term i want to be free and and the fucking libertarian party is not doing that for me no they're fucking they're 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 more they're they're they're, they're dissolving the message more and more and they're, they're making it more palatable for people that just want to vote mm-hmm. and like it, it really has no bearing on people's lives whatso fucking ever Right. I don't care if, if Adam. I don't care if Adam Kokesh and Hornberger and and McAfee and Jorgensen and Perry all were on like this super amazing ticket and like that's their whole cabinet and everything. And they all got on there on the debate stage with with Trump. The people that want to vote, the status that that surround us, they don't give a fuck about liberty. No, they don't care. Mm-mm. So like the only way that we're gonna find it today now is by taking actions and steps to to move towards a life that's more centered centered around the second realm, which is anything that, you know, is off books and, you know, allows you to be more free and, and, and less susceptible to coercion from the state. Right. And, you know, I, that's why I had more respect for the vermin, um, the vermin Cohen, uh, running mates, Spike Cohen specifically, cause I've had him on the show and I like that. I like that vermin makes a mockery of everything. Um, I just think it's hilarious watching the Libertarian Party actual, you know, stuck in voting people screech over it. But talking with Spike, I know that Spike and even uh, Jacob Hornberger have gone out. And I can't remember what it's called, but um, actually out into neighborhoods where people don't go, um, especially with political campaigns and whatnot and asking people what they need in their life and how they can help and stuff like that. I'm like, see, if you're going to use a platform, even a status platform for something, that's the way that you should be doing it is offering people actual help, trying to figure out what they need rather than, I don't know, whatever the fuck everybody else runs on and tries to buy their fucking votes with. Um, I think that's good, but I can still is keep it throwing only, more gas. The on only that problem fire. I see with that is like, the only thing I, the only problem I see with that is most people don't know what the fuck they need. Right. Most most individuals in this world know what they're told they need. They don't really know what they need because they've never had to actually take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. So asking people what they need is kind of irrelevant. Like it's it's asking it's like asking an eight year old what they what do you what do you need to be happy? Candy. He doesn't <laughs> fucking know. He's never had to exactly. He yeah. wants candy. He wants he wants you to give him a bunch of shit. Yeah. They, they sure as hell don't want to make their uh, make their bed and clean their room, which is what they really need to do. Sure. Well, and the difference here, um, at least from Spike, I can't I can't speak for Jacob Hornberger, but the stuff he was saying, because you know I I grilled him pretty good on the show um, about like how he reconciles being an anarchist and doing this stuff. But he's saying, you know, I was going into these communities, and they're pretty much agorist communities already. They just don't know that they are, and uh, they just want to be left alone. And that's what resonated with me because it's like it's the same message that pretty much everyone principled that I know and everyone who's taking action has. I just want to be fucking left alone. And so it's like, how do we achieve that for all of these communities and not just us, other people who want to be left alone who aren't necessarily identifying as anarchists or whatever? You got you to gotta create black markets. You have mm-hmm. to You have to create a culture of security that protects those black markets um you know that 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 brings them out of the fucking out of the out of the light of the state and and the individuals that worship the state and that allows them to actually operate um freely within you know within the shadows that's just it the that's only fucking it way. the security I mean, we will culture. never we will, ne- we will never be able to fucking advertise yeah, well, we will never be able to advertise a truly free business on, you know, fucking the network news. Mm. <laughs> It'll never happen. Right. I mean, you're not going to see um, uh, what's that? What's the new um, not defense distributed, but uh, what's the new uh, company that's 3D printing firearms? Oh, shit. I it's can't not remember. defense distributed. It's like something. I know what you're talking something about. Something deterrence dispensed. There you go. 
you'll never see this deterrence dispensed advertising their fucking uh, FGC nine, the fuck gun control nine <laughs> on, you know, the fucking Saturday morning cartoons. It's never going to happen. Maybe. So it has be to be nice. done underground. It has to be in the shadows. <laughs> yeah. No, in reality, yeah. But fuck, that would be yeah. pretty cool to see that on Saturday morning cartoons. But, um, And we kind of had a discussion about this before, <laughs> um, about you know the effectiveness of people who are actually trying to do this. Now, I believe we had that in a text discussion, but um, people going out and you know being mm-hmm. armed security for businesses that want to open up during this whole COVID nonsense. Um, yeah, I think I don't know. It's I've had long conversations with many people about this, and it seems like most people agree that if you're out there doing it and the business still gets ticketed or penalties or whatever, then what's the point of even having been there? Um, it's it's likened with the begaloo with going out and not doing anything, and then they pass the laws anyways. I appreciate that people are going mm-hmm. out, but where's the action? Where is that actual security? And I know, you know, asking for that when I'm not out there doing it right at this moment is also, um, I don't know, it's a weird thing because we have to be able to talk about it, but we also have to do it. Yeah, I think... I think the line comes when I don't think you can draw that line when it comes to white market businesses. Um, mm. I think the the optics of it are the optics are, are terrible. Mm. Uh, it just makes us look like terrorists if we open fire protecting a fucking uh, a legitimate business from cops. Because mm. if if you're gonna if you're gonna beg permission from them in order to have a business license and ever in order to you know pay pay your fucking property taxes on your business. You're 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 consenting to their fucking rules through your silence and through you through your through your fucking consent by asking them their permission. Right now, if I've got a black market business and it's completely you know off off of what you what, what they know, um, I don't have as much of a problem with actually taking defensive measures to protect that business when the boot when the when the fucking alphabet boys roll up. Right, that's but, an excellent point. I mean, even then, you're still gonna have. You're still gonna have like the 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 piss poor optics, but because they're gonna they're gonna spin it however the fuck they want. Lord knows the you know the the media is going to make you look terrible, right. no matter what you do. But it's it's kind of I kind of look at it the same way that I look at at fucking the Libertarian Party. Sure, in the long term cultural evolution towards a more freer society, you need you need people like that. Mm-hmm. But for those that want freedom now, that want to be free from from coercion today. It's, it doesn't really do much, right? Um, you know, allowing the the allowing the people that you are supposed to be providing security for to be kidnapped and and caged, you failed at your security job. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it does go a long way as far as changing the culture of how you how you in it how you interact with with the alphabet boys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if if they see that. They're going to get pushback. They will be less likely to 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 attempt it. I mean, they're they're a bunch of fucking cowards and idiots. Honestly, the only reason that they take these actions is because they feel they're fucking immune because they got this stupid fucking badge. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the only reason that they really feel justified in, in taking the actions and assaulting and robbing and raping and killing people. Right. Um, because they feel that they're you know, they're they're immune to morality. Right. Um. And when you show them that, hey. Motherfuckers aren't going to take this forever. They, they'll, they'll back down. I mean, look at uh, look at what happened at the Bundy Ranch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, fuck, 200, 200 some odd people were, were fucking, you know, armed up, ready to fucking defend the a- Ammon Bundy. And because because they were because the fucking BLM was stealing their cattle. Right. I mean, and they had a fucking showdown in the middle of the road and the, the federal government backed down. Well, and um, see, that's there's some differences so, uh, between um, Bundy Ranch and I think most of this shit's actually happening in Texas, it seems like, where people are armed defending businesses. And the one I'm thinking of uh, specifically are the where all the Meal Team 6 um, memes came from, those big old fat FUD-looking, um, I think, sheriffs with the MRAP <laughs> that came up, and there was a handful of uh, mm-hmm. what looked to be boog boys that just immediately surrendered. And it's like back to your point also about, you know, doing this for a white market business. Why are we doing this for a white market business that is supporting uh, them through taxation and whatnot, giving the money to bring that MRAP to do just that? 
Um, so yeah, that's the bad optics. The other bad optics are also if you do just immediately surrender, it just makes you look like you're full of shit. And if you're wearing the Hawaiian shirts and all that stuff too, while you're doing this, it's immediately, uh, it's an open invitation for people to start dumping all over the, the Boogaloo movement and anybody who says Boogaloo as well. Yeah. I mean, I have to agree with, with like part of the, you know, we, we, we had, we had some pretty decent conflict in, in this text text, uh, conversation we had uh, like a week or so ago and i have to admit um you know the the fucking the idea that you're gonna go out there and you're gonna fucking cosplay a boog boy it, it, it's it's stupid and childish i mean does it have some type of effect um morale wise for for the current boog guys that are that are that really want to fucking get out there and start pulling triggers sure but that in the in the in the long run that's not gonna have that much of effect right um i really I really don't look forward to the fucking boogaloo. I mean, I'm, I'm not like huge on the eff- efficacy of the boogaloo. Like, mm. I, does do I want to fucking start defending myself and the, and and my friends and family um, f- with justified violence? Absolutely, but it's not going to do much right. because the the culture that we that we live in is so fucking pathetically kowtowed that we're just going to get fucking labeled conspiracy theorists and, and fucking domestic terrorists. And we're just going to be shoved under the, under the, under the rug. So like what I want, what I, what I truly want to see is the, the ability to evolve the, the cultural consciousness of, of Americans and humanity worldwide um, to, to, to a more self-reliable, self-responsible, um, mindset where you know property rights is is the fucking number one you know principle like like when you when you ask somebody what's the most important thing in your life they should say principles not their kids because if they if if they if they are holding their kids above their principles they're gonna fucking fail uh to to raise their kids with principles because the you know your your principles should be the number one thing in your life uh over everything because if you don't have principles, you don't have any integrity, you don't have honor, and you're just going to be raising more generations of shitty fucking people that want to roll over and you know fucking take the scraps from from the from they them those who be, who falsely believe that they are your authority over your life. Right. And so, if if we if we if we can apply the 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 methods, or if we can figure out what methods work first off, in order to actually uh, create a culture based on, you know, uh, consent and respect for property rights and self reliability and self responsibility. I mean, I see that as the only way that we will ever reach a a society uh, that is overall uh, more anarchistic and and free of um, government. But it's a long fucking road. Mm-hmm. It's it, I mean, it took us. 6,000 years to get to where we are now from fucking Sodom and Gomorrah. So, like, I think the the evolution over the last, you know, six, 7,000 years has been towards more, uh, more individual autonomy. But what we've seen over the last 150, 200 years is a really strong pushback of central authorities right. trying to control what people do, and you have to have some pushback in the other direction. Right. Um, like it's, it's not going to be a quick and easy thing. It's going to take generations. No, yeah, exactly. Um, my, so I think there's a combination of the two. I, we may have spoken about this. I know I've talked about it before, but I think as you make these peaceful transitions, uh, the state, the beast, whatever you want to call it, is going to react violently as they lose their hold. And that also um, goes along with the idea, or who knows what the idea is, because there's so many different people in... I don't know, fuck, and caps, uh, boog circles, whatever you want to fucking call them, that are have different opinions on what each of the different philosophies is, what each of the different actions should be, all that stuff. Nobody's, you know, even people who identify as the same thing don't agree on everything. Um, and I think, uh, I can't remember who I was talking to yesterday, but pretty much if you're a boog boy, you should be... A, mercenary anarchist mercenaries against the state you should be ready to defend these ideas that you're talking about the peaceful transitions um principles and markets um mutual aid societies all that stuff that you should be the muscle behind that not necessarily wanting to go out and start civil war ii electric boogaloo 
because I that's never been what it's about for me or a lot of people, but it is for a lot of the people who are waving the Gazden flag or fucking any minarchist shit or Trump flags and calling themselves boo-boo. They want to pop something off, and I don't know what the fuck they even want out of that. It's just... It's the same as any argument um, from anybody who says we need to go back to the Constitution. It's like the Constitution either fucking got us here or wasn't able to stop it. So you're just doing the same thing over and over yeah. again. Um, but I think there's there's a yeah, happy medium. I hate, with I hate it. when people I hate when people try to cite the Constitution as some good thing. It's what fucking enslaved you people. Mm -hmm. Like the anti federalists had a way better plan. The fucking Constitution was trash, and it's a fucking slavery document. Get the fuck out of here with that. We got to go back to the Constitution. You're a fucking idiot. I mean that that that's one of like my fucking pet peeves. I hate that shit. Um, but it, it seems like there's a lot of people that are just really scared and frustrated and angry. And, and when you get in that, that state, you don't think properly. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't analyze your own position critically. You, you get wrapped up in this, you know, confirmation bias and you just want to start fucking shooting people because you don't know any other option. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of, a lot of the minarchists, a lot of status, a lot of the, these Gadsden flag three percenters, um, a lot of those individuals, they ju they're just frustrated and scared, and rightfully so. But you can't you can't just you know relegate yourself to well I'm just going to start shooting everybody mm -hmm. because then everybody's fucking dead. You don't have people that you're able to build a community with anymore, and yeah. and and the, the the federal government is really good at killing people. Mm -hmm. The federal government is so good. That's like the one thing that they're really good at is murdering people. So why would you go up against your enemy where they're their strongest? Mm -hmm. You know, you got to focus on where they're not the strongest, which is economically, soci so, uh, socially, uh, community oriented wise. Like, sure, they can they can fucking brainwash people, but if you if you show people a better method and you introduce it to them slowly they're going to come around eventually right like this and everything with this fucking COVID thing has been a huge boon to the liberty movement mm -hmm. i've got people in my fucking family that i thought i was the only fucking crazy ass anarchist around turns out there's seven of us in my yeah. family like <laughs> half of my fucking cousins are all anarchists and i didn't even fucking know about it mm -hmm. um so like you know it, everything that's going on right now is 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 showing people why the state is evil especially when they start rolling out this fucking mandatory vaccine because we know it's going to happen mm -hmm. we fucking know it's going to happen um you know that's going to have a huge impact and it's either going to uh it's going to kick off the boogaloo or they're going to have to back down mm -hmm. that's that's really the only two options that i see um they they try and roll out mandatory vaccines. A lot of people are going to start pulling triggers, and right. well, and you know, I don't see the, that. The, the the average Fed boy fucking being willing to do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I you know they they want yeah. it. They've been they've been fucking they've been you know trying to c culturally condition us to want to fight them. Mm -hmm. um because that's where they're the, that's where they're strongest at. Right. You see all these all these movies and books and 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 shit coming out over the last you know, couple decades about individuals f you know, violently defending themselves against the state. And, you know, it's just predictive programming to make people want to pull triggers against fed boys. And it's, 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 it's a fucking trap mm -hmm. as far as I can tell. Well, yeah. And they're, and they're going to do everything to dog walk people into it. I think they're ready for that uh, violent response too, because that was the first thing that Trump said was that he's going to uh, mobilize the military to bring out these vaccines. And it's like, okay, because that, cause that's a, a benign <laughs> statement, you know. You just need the military to transport them. Sure you do. Okay. So, yeah, I think that could kick something off. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. You, you got a good rant. You give me, you're giving me so many points when you're talking that <laughs> I'm losing some other ones. But um, <laughs> I think, if anything, it won't necessarily be the violent enforcement of a, of a mandatory vaccine. I think it'll go along with the whole... You know, you can't fly or you can't go to these places in public and things like that if you don't get it. I don't think they're going to hold you down and shoot you up with whatever concoction they have put together to supposedly defeat COVID. But who fucking knows? Yeah, I think I think if they if they really want it to 
to happen if they really if they don't give up the idea of vaccinating the entire fucking world then that's the that's the route they'll go they'll say you know you can't you can't have these products or services unless you have this this mm -hmm. thing you know your your freedom to travel is is suspended yo what, what's what's that fucking the that fucking cop that was at the the church uh when the governor gives an order your rights are suspended like you know that's exactly what the fuck they're gonna say mm -hmm. and uh you know, it's it's if they if they really want to go through with vaccinating everyone, then that's that that's what they'll do. They'll go for the soft tyranny mm -hmm. uh, because it's more palatable to the masses. And you know, I, I, I'm more afraid of that than I am of of them rolling through my town with fucking M wraps, stopping at everybody's house and contact tracing them and making sure they get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's more effective uh, that way. It absolutely is. But I think that's also going to open up a lot of black and gray market opportunities. It should. People should be using that just like they're using them now. Um, the tighter the control on this stuff, the more opportunities we have to build in those spaces. And people are taking advantage of it. Um, it's hard to see a lot of things that people are taking advantage of because they're doing it quietly, obviously, because they don't want to get in trouble. But it's kind of it. This is a point that. Uh, I was thinking of talking about before too that goes along with this um, of why I think some violence may be necessary is because once the that fist of government is tightened too much how, how are you going to open it up without violence you know how are we going to stop um, this climb or descent into absolute control and tyranny uh, without violence without fighting back well I mean, I think really the only option to to stop it, stop it, um, without violence, is putting putting the federal government on blast for the for the evil that they that they do. Um, I don't see any other way of 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 doing that, and you have to have a high enough um, a high enough amount of individuals that see what's happening. Um, you know, you have to, you have to take some, some actions that are going to stop them, stop, stop the masses from having, um, their bread and circus so long enough for them to pay attention mm -hmm. because if, if everybody's distracted, they're not going to give a shit. Um, so it, does that count as violence? I mean, if you, if you fucking take out some. Uh, some TV station antennas or radio antennas or whatever, what what have you, um, and even and even that would be like kind of less effective because you've, they've still got the internet, right? And you know, if you fucking if you boot up if you boot up the internet and the first thing you see is fucking Yahoo News, well, you're not getting any information out really, right? So I mean, is it possible to just stop it? No, but I also don't think it's necessary to stop it. I think the more, the more they roll it out, the 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 deeper the tyranny gets, and the more overt their violence gets, the 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 better the chance of waking up the masses to mm. how illegitimate uh, government violence and authority really is. Sure. So I mean, maybe in a, you know it's a very counterintuitive thing, but yeah, sure, roll out the fucking new world order. Sure. Show these people what you really believe in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that'll be, have, you know, a huge effect on waking people up and allowing them to be for, to to want to be free. Right. Uh, circling back once again to what we were talking about, about um, bagelous and the optics of going out and not actually taking any action uh, violently with that stuff. Um, I think it was in Michigan. Uh, where they quote unquote stormed the Capitol building and they didn't storm anything. They stopped at the scary police line. Um, but that did have an effect that I was surprised by. So I gotta, I gotta give that point up is that, um, whoever, what was it? The Senate or whatever in, in Michigan decided not to meet. First of all, they showed up with bulletproof vests and whatnot cause they were scared. And then second of all, they decided not to meet, uh, in the Capitol building or wherever the hell they were. And I was like, well, fuck. That had an effect that I didn't expect one bit. I didn't think they would give a shit about that because in places like Virginia, you know, Northam didn't give a shit about the tens of thousands of people who came to those rallies. He still passed it. And then all of a sudden there's an effect happening from people showing up and showing that they're angry. So I'm not sure uh, what to make of that. You know, I've long for a long time, I've been 
of the mind that public protests don't do a goddamn thing. Um, they, 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 it's a, it's a steam valve. It allows the people to, to rabble rouse and be all mad, but in reality, the politicians are going to do whatever the fuck they want anyways. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think the instance that you're talking about in, in Michigan where, uh, where nitwit fucking, she, you know, shut down the, 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 the state government, um, you know, I think that was more uh, proactive self-defense on their part mm -hmm. because, you know, they can still fucking have Zoom meetings. They don't have to meet in person. Sure. Um, like, the, the, the fucking bylaws and, and the rules that they're supposed to be running these governments by don't really fucking matter. They, they do whatever the hell they want. So they can pass all the laws they want on a Zoom meeting. They don't have to be in person. Mm -hmm. um, and with the fucking... The, where the quarantine, everybody is emergency, you have to stay home, they can pass whatever the fuck laws they want, and it's all legal under their own rules. So, like, when you make your own rules, you get to fucking make them whatever the hell they, you want them to be so they can jump through whatever hoops they want. Like, I think they were I think they were just scared, so, like, it was effective at making them not want to fucking pull their heads out, you know, poke their heads up and, and, and get it fucking shot off. Right. Uh, but I don't I, I don't think it's going to be very effective in the long run to stopping government from uh, writing down on pieces of paper that they can do evil things and or that the, the police can do evil things on their behalf. Right. Um, they're, they're still going to keep writing laws. They're still going to do whatever the fuck they want. Um, you know, and my like I said, it's my opinion that protests are just a steam valve, you know, because uh, it doesn't really stop them from doing anything. It could be a perfect excuse for them to be like, all right, well, you're not going to behave and just take what we give you, you know, take our tyranny, then we'll just do it without um, you being able to see any of it, pretty much, which they already do in a lot of cases. Um, so, and that was a very good point with whatever Zoom meeting or however they want to do it so that's not public, because that's uh, exactly, I know they've tossed around the idea in other places, but here in Washington State, tossed around the idea of having a closed-door um private private quote-unquote meeting of whoever is on the board to decide of whether or not there should be an income tax because they're tired of people voting it down so like all right we'll just go uh you know behind closed doors and do this so that might be a thing that, that uh we start seeing more and more if there's more protests if you're not going to let us do this publicly without this pushback then we'll do it privately and you'll have to eat it anyways which I think is a very good, which is I think is a, in the long run a very good thing because it shows the beast for what it really is. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers that don't give a shit about how you feel, your liberty, your rights, your freedom. They don't give a fuck. It's just a bunch of fucking magic trappings and fucking it's, it's them hiding behind the curtain of, of legitimacy. So keep doing it fucking have your fucking zoom meetings legislate from behind the curtains mm -hmm. keep it up because you're just pissing people off right so like you know roll out the new world order motherfuckers please <laughs> keep helping us fucking a yeah um well we're coming near the end of the hour uh, i wanted to ask you about some of the latest interviews you've had on anarchy radio because they seem pretty interesting i know i think you had an ancap versus ancom uh a couple segments ago right yeah, um, I started doing a uh, um, this community building project uh, where I bring. Uh, it's not so much ANCAP versus ANCOM. It's ANCAPs and ANCOMs coming together to better understand one another's mm -hmm. philosophy instead of just assuming what the other person thinks um, and accepting the fact that they can can feel one way, I can feel another way. We don't have to agree, and we can still work together to build. Um, you know these these paths towards the second realm where we can all be free um i call it the panarchy discussions um and like i said it's just really you know really about um community building and and bridging that divide between ancaps and ancoms you know capitalists and communists with you know if 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 you know we're fucking you know using the stupid labels but we're all just anarchists that want to organize how we see fit mm -hmm. it's it, my values are mine to decide yours are yours to decide i don't have to agree with you you don't have to fucking agree with me the only thing we have to agree on is not to force the other person to live like we want right. and i think throughout these uh these discussions that we've had um you know a 
both of the ANCOMs that I've had on have been completely willing to allow ANCAPs to live how they want. And both the ANCAPs that I've had on have been perfectly willing to allow the ANCOMs to live how they want. Now, they've got their own trepidations on what if this resource runs out and da 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 That's what fucking, you know, dispute resolution agencies are for, um, mediation groups, um, you know, it goes a long way. You don't have to fucking fight and kill each other over who's going to fucking cut down these trees. Right. There's so many more options. And, and that's really what the, what these discussions are about is how do we move from point a where we have a state to point B where we're, we, you have your community, I have my community and we're not killing each other over resources. Nice. And then can people only find these live or are they recorded in uh, archives somewhere for people to watch? Um, we do stream live uh, at float.app forward slash anarchy radio, and they are uh, and it's exclusively on float. And then they are archived as well on float. You just go uh, float.app forward slash anarchy radio, you scroll down to media, um, and then that'll give you like pics, video, uh, audio, and it's all done. Um, it's archived through audio, so I just upload the MP3s, and you can listen to it while you're working or driving or whatnot. Sick. Perfect, man. Well, that was fucking sweet. Um, I'll have all those links in the description, too, so people can find that. Maybe get on the Float app and check it out. Um, and then you're going to also be at Anarcho Vegas this year, right? What do you got going on at, at Anarcho Vegas? I hope so. Um, situations have changed in the last week where I'm not... I'm not. I'm not working the job that I was. Mm. Um, I'm going to be transferring over to a, a driving job, so that might have some effect. But as as of right now, I'm still slated to uh, have Anarchy Radio playing, uh, DJing the the closing party at Anarcho Vegas 2020. It'll be um, the whole weekend is Crypto Vegas and Anarcho Vegas. Uh, it's July 18th and 19th. Uh, we've got a bunch of awesome speakers. We've got Larkin Rose, G. Edward Griffin, um, Lynn Ulbricht. I mean, that alone. Lynn Ulbricht is mm -hmm. is a fucking huge one that I want to meet. I've, I've 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 missed her at a couple of pork fests, um, so I, I've never had the opportunity of meeting her in person. Um, but there's going to be Tim Uh It's going to be you know just a weekend of crypto and anarchy, and you know making inroads. And then if you uh, if you get the your, the the VIP tickets, which you can get 10% off by using Anarchy Radio as a coupon code. Um, you know, you get access to the all the after, the after parties and uh, all the go all the really good fucking uh, community building and um, and connective um, events. Sick, sick. Sounds perfect. Yeah, we'll get that uh, coupon code in the description as well for people. Awesome, man. Uh, hopefully you can stick around for just a couple minutes after we sign off from the main show for the Patreon After Hours. And, uh, yeah, if you're not a Dank Podstash Absolutely. patron, you can go to patreon.com slash the Dank Podstash and see what uh, Phoenix is going to say in there because I'm going to put him on the spot like I always do. All right. <laughs> it was a great show, man. I appreciate it. Awesome stories. We're definitely going to have to do it again. Um, and it's, everybody go check out Anarchy Radio because it's fucking sweet. I've been on there. It was a great time. Quest authority and refuse obedience. That's right. Total freedom, no exceptions. Enemy of the State's Dank Podstash is sponsored by Project Sparta. Go to ProjectSpartaCoaching.com to learn more. I'm in